My name is Mr. Kessler and this is part two of my density video series. This one's called Regular Shaped Objects. Let's quickly review what we learned last week. We learned the formula for density was mass divided by volume. This line right here represents divided by, it's like a fraction, divided by volume. D equals M over V. That may also be a way they're going to see this formula written. It just means density equals mass divided by volume. Same thing as it says above. I also showed you a trick right here on how to remember the formula for density. And that is if you draw a heart and you put mass at the top and volume at the bottom, you'll see that there is an M right here at the top of the heart for the M and mass and a V at the bottom of the heart for the V and volume. If you can remember how to draw a heart, you should be able to remember that mass goes on top, volume goes on bottom, and then the line through the middle represents the division. All right, density of a regular shaped object. Sometimes the volume isn't known and we have to calculate it ourselves. Last week I gave you some problems that had mass and volume already. This week you're going to have an object in front of you that you have to actually calculate the volume and you're only given the mass. All right, so there's a formula for that. And if you have a regular shaped object, we're talking about objects that you can measure with a ruler. For example, a cube or a rectangular prism. So the formula for a regular shaped object is length times width times height. You may also see it written like this, L times W times H. This formula is something that you're just going to have to memorize. Length times width times height is the formula for a regular shaped object. Okay, let's do a sample problem. This will make a lot more sense. What is the density of a cube if the mass is 36 grams? So we're given the mass, 36 grams. It says it right here. So that part is going to go on top of our heart. But we don't know the volume yet. However, we have the cube in front of us. And let's pretend I have a ruler and I already measured these. The length I measured is 3 centimeters. The length is right here. The width right here I measured is 2 centimeters. And the height is also 3 centimeters. We will just fill in these fields right here. Length, 3 centimeters. Width, 2 centimeters. And height, 3 centimeters. And let me show you how to work this problem. This is a little tricky if you haven't done it before. So kind of follow along. You'll take 3 times 2. That'll, that's 6. 3 times 2 is 6. And then you take 6 times 3. 6 times 3 is 18. The answer will be 18. If you're putting it into a calculator, you would do it like this. 3 times the times button, 2, the times button again, 3. And then you would get the same answer, 18. So we have 18 cubic centimeters is the volume of this block right here, or the volume of this cube. It's how much space it occupies. So now we have the mass, we have the volume, we can go back to what we know last week, know from last week, and calculate density. Let's go do that. It says, what's the density of a cube if the mass is 36 and the volume, I just transferred it over to this slide, is 18. This is what we just found in the last slide. Okay, it's the same problem. I just re rewrote it with our new information since after we calculated the volume. Now, you should be able to calculate it using the formula from last week. You'll remember your heart right here, mass divided by volume. Then we'll take the mass and substitute the word mass for the actual mass. We'll put 36 because that's where we got this right here. And the volume is 18 centimeters cubed. We got that from right here. And we'll just write it as a fraction, 36 over 18. Remember, I said the top dog goes in the house. Top dog will go in the house. 36 goes in the house. 18 goes outside the house. 18 into 36, two times. So the answer is D equals 2. But are we done yet? 
No, we still have to put the unit of measurement. If we go back to our heart, that's where we can find our unit of measurement. It's grams per centimeters cubed. Grams per centimeters cubed. So it's a two-step process when you have to find volume on its own, but it's the same puzzle. At the very end, it all becomes the same puzzle. That's how you find volume of a regular shaped object. We're going to now do a quick little lab to find volume of some regular shaped objects around the classroom, and you're going to do a quick worksheet. Tomorrow, we're going to learn how to find the volume of an irregular shaped object. Thanks for listening.